Hello, everybody. Welcome back from the lunch. Hopefully, more people will join. Um, my name is Anton. I'm from company Microtech. Uh, today, I will talk about uh, our 60 gigahertz devices and some news and some uh, things about 60 gigahertz. So, what is 60 gigahertz? Uh, our device is uh, in 60 gigahertz works under 802.11 AD protocol. Uh, it's on license band or license with some limitations. Uh, it's high attenuation over oxygen uh, helps avoiding radio interference. So, basically, things that works uh, against distance works in your favor if you want to avoid interference. Uh, to get higher gain, you don't need large antenna. Uh, you can get a lot of gain out of smaller antennas. So, uh, possibly everybody has seen this picture. It's attenuation versus distance. Uh, spike in the middle is uh, attenuation at 60 gigahertz. Uh, this is logarithmic scale, so basically it's even worse than it seems here. Uh, if we compare uh, existing 60 gigahertz uh, to other uh, protocols, we can see why this actually matters so much. Uh, at 2.4 gigahertz, we can get high, free, high distances. Uh, we can penetrate through objects, but uh, speed is kind of limited. Those are real-life tests done in our lab. As you can see, at 60 gigahertz, we are not limited by Ethernet. We are not limited by wireless interface, but we are limited by Ethernet interface. So, gigabit Ethernet is a bit too short for this radio. Uh, we run some tests. We used Xena Networks testing suite for this one. Uh, we wanted to check how does this compares to running a wire from one PC to other PC. So basically we run tests from one PC to other PC, get our uh, base measurement. Later we repeated this test but replaced the cable with wireless wire kit and we got such results. So basically we are getting 100% uh, wireless, wired performance over wireless. Just at the small packets, we lose a, a little small margin. So let's talk about devices, because now we have multiple devices supporting uh, this frequency. Our main uh, best-known devices are wireless wire. Uh, it's already pre-configured kit of two devices. So basically, you're receiving box of two devices inside that is configured, password protect, protected, and you can replace uh, wire and get radio link, transport radio link. Uh, it runs on four-core ARM CPU. It's a very powerful, powerful CPU in very small package. It only uses five, five watts of maximum power. And it also supports different PoE in options. So you can run them from your PoE switches. Uh, suggested range is up to 200 meters or more. Uh, this or more means that you can run it at higher distances, but link may be less stable. Uh, it supports beamforming, and it also can be used in point to multipoint uh, installations. Uh, there's a five frequency channels, so you can uh, switch between them. Uh, total ERP is under 40 dBm, and price for kit is only $198. So basically you're getting two devices at very low price. Uh, there's a bigger brother for this device, it's called a uh, wireless wire dish. This is a device made for higher distances. Uh, we recommend for distances up to 1.5 kilometers, but it can be used at much, much higher distances. Distance also depends on used frequency. The higher the frequency, the less you are attenuating in oxygen. 
because the main spike is at 60 gigahertz. Uh, antenna gain is 42 dBi, and total ERP is under 55 dBm. Uh, can be used as CPEs, as point to multipoint. Uh, those devices also can be used as access points if you upgrade the license, but we don't suggest this use case because the radiation pattern for this device is very small. Uh, we also have small CPEs like A60 square Y60. Uh, it's mostly designed for use in point to multipoint connections. Uh, you can connect multiple of those to existing web access point and provide up to 200 megabits for each client. It's limited by fast Ethernet interface. It has range of 200 meters or more, the same as WAP. Uh, it's a slim, slim design. Uh, our known design uh, shares the same um, sizes as the 60 square series. Um, price for this unit is only $69. Uh, there is also a high gain version for CPE. This is LHG Lite 60. It also has a 100 megabit interface. It's uh, limited by that, not by radio interface. Uh, it works at the same distance as LHG 60G, and it's designed for long range CPE. So if you have clients far away, up to 1.5 or more um, meters, uh, you can use this one. Um, we have access points. The first one is WAP 60G AP. It's the same platform, it's the same uh, as wireless wire uh, kit device, uh, but it's a single unit. This unit is available in uh, two versions. One is a CPE version, where it's the client that you connect to existing access point, and this version which is an access point. Uh, it has 60 degree field of view, so you can use it as sector antenna for your CPEs. And the new one, WAP 60G X3 access point. So basically, this is like having three of previous ones together, uh, covering 180 degrees. Um, it's an access point for eight clients, and price for this is under $200. So, uh, how to use point to multipoint? Uh, all devices uh, can be linked together, no matter what version of them. Um, license level for access point needs to be minim minimum four. So, if you get uh, WAP 60 GAP or WAP 60 G X3 device, uh, license is already included in that one. Uh, if you want to upgrade existing one, you can order license in our web page or use one from this convention, for example. Uh, you can use multiple channels, so you can put multiple devices, multiple access points up on one pole and do not make any radio interference. Um, when you use uh, those devices in point multipoint devices, uh, distances are a bit different. Um, with WAPs to WAPs and A60 squares to WAPs and A60 squares, you are getting up to 200 meters. Uh, if you're using LHGs as CPEs, you can get up to 800 meters. So there's a enough room to get uh, all the clients connected to your, to your devices. Uh, few recommendations. Uh, we are always uh, adding new features uh, to RotorOS, so each update has a lot of important things inside that. So we always uh, recommend reading change logs following us uh, on development, uh, because each version has something special, especially for 60G. Uh, you can find the use sector information. Uh, all sectors programmed in devices are numbered, and each of them has metadata attached to them. So basically, if you are pointing your device to your access point, you are s 
checking, or you also can check where are you pointing and how far you are from center. So this allows for better, easier uh, alignment. Um, Alignment, there's also added aligned mode. Um, this mode runs some traffic through the link and makes the beamforming faster. So the uh, readings from signal reads faster. Um, after you finish aligning, um, always start with, uh, when you are aligning, always start with uh, visual aligning first. Align it visually, after that switch to software. Check what software says. After that, run align mode, find the best, get the center, and leave it there. After that, test throughput, run traffic generator. There is a great wiki in our wiki. Uh, explain, explain how to run traffic generator from one device to another one. Uh, you can also use bandwidth test, which has been updated in the latest versions to use multiple cores for tests. And there's also speed test added to RotorOS. Uh, the speed test unit, the speed test command is uh, something you run from one router to another one. It's not like you're running from here to speedtest.net servers. No, it's a command to run from one router to another one. Uh, there's also on LHG devices alignment LEDs. So what does those LEDs do? Uh, when metadata is received from sector, it shows where you have to turn your device uh, to get the best signal, because all the signal is in the middle. Uh, LAG devices has very narrow uh, radiation pattern, so it's less than one degree, both horizontal and vertical planes. So you have to align very carefully. Uh, LEDs help with that. So you first get signal, uh, the lowest LED signals that you have wireless connection, and it shows we have to move it up and right. So at first we align up or down, after that right or left, or other way around. Uh, it's also very important what frequency you select. Not all frequencies uh, are allowed everywhere. Check your local LGOS situations if you're not sure. Uh, but our all devices has five available frequency channels. Uh, first four can be uh, put in Winbox or CLI or however you're connecting to device. And the fifth one is accessible from command line interface. So at first you have to edit scan list works like in regular Microtik virus access point where you add channels you are using. After that, you set frequency. Uh, set frequency to, for example, 66 gigahertz, and you're ready to go to connect at 66 gigahertz. Uh, distance is at uh, 64.8 gigahertz and 66. Uh, in our test setups is even more than five kilos. Uh, is it stable? Uh, it depends. Uh, we would recommend using backup links at those dis distances. So, thank you for your attention. If you have... Uh, maybe you have any questions? Sorry, could you please come here so everyone can hear your question? How oh, I come only one mic here? <laughs> can I use uh, the next frequency direct between? Or must I have space between the frequency? If I have five gigahertz, there must be space between the frequencies because they are the overlap, the frequency range. Yeah, that's actually a great question. Uh, overlap also are here in 60 gigahertz, but if devices are far enough from each other, it doesn't matter, you can use closed channels as well. The closer they are to each other, the more, more you will see that there's something nearby uh, making some interference in your channel as well. Uh, maybe some other questions as well? We have some time. 
Okay. If you have any questions, I will be at the table. Oh, one more question. Hello. Uh, I'm very interested if you have plans about uh, splitting the channels uh, so we can have uh, more uh, base stations uh, or uh, we can have the 60-degree uh, sectors uh, and uh, we can reu uh, not reuse uh, the uh, frequency but uh, we can use something like 400-500 uh, 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 megabit uh, uh, per sector with a half of the uh, needed raster size. Yeah, thank you. Um, splitting channels is a bit difficult because it's not exactly under 802.11 AD standard. Uh, we will check what we can do, but it's a bit out of standard. Yeah, thank you. If you have any more questions, I will be at table, at new products table. Feel free to ask me about 60 gigahertz, about wireless. Thank you. <laughs>